Welcome back to KUAM's Pledge Drive Help and Hope for the Philippines Super Typhoon Yolanda. Severe shortages of water, electricity and medical supplies are making for slow progress in this hospital in the ground zero city of Tacloban. The super typhoon shattered not just residential houses, but hospital buildings, leaving only a few wards to use. In Eastern Visayas Regional Medical Center, the largest public hospital in Tacloban, a lack of drug and blood supplies has prevented doctors from performing most operations. Many patients had to transfer out from the region to bigger hospitals, and some died from infections and excessive bleeding. The hospital is also in dire need of more medical workers. Ivan Reeve Espina is an official with the medical center. Uh, the doctors who were on duty here during the typhoon did not go home. They stayed on duty for four days without any food, without any uh, rest, without any sleep because they had to con continuously attend to the patients. Making things worse, incoming medical supplies are trapped in the local airport due to blocked traffic in the region as well bodies of victims were piling up in hospital mortuaries or lining up along streets in the hot weather waiting to be buried. Uman Valbueno is the commander of the Philippine Health Department. We decided three days ago, that was three days ago, that we will bury them in a common grave so that uh, to get rid of, uh, of the, uh, what do you call this, of cadavers on the street. But again, we are trying our best to to transport them to these burial sites. And because of the lack of transportation and the lack of, of gasoline, uh, that hamper our, our uh, work in, in uh, what do you call this, bringing these dead bodies to the burial, uh, burial areas. With us now are doctors Tom Shea and Erica Alford from the Guam Medical Association. This weekend, a team of several physicians and members of the island's media corps will be heading to the Philippines on a medical mission. KOM, of course, will also be on that mission with the medical team to document their relief effort. Um, well, first, just tell us about the medical mission and how this all came to be. Dr. Shea. Okay, yeah, sure. Thank you for having us here. No um, I think the what came about is that this is part of our mission statement is mm -hmm. health advocacy and uh, Philippines is a very close network with Guam. We have a lot of family and friends back there and here as well and we work very closely with them and uh, when we heard about the disaster we gave $30,000 to the American mm -hmm. Red Cross but that's going to be designated to the Philippine Red Cross and then from there we also organized and we planned on three mission waves, medical missions. Uh, initial wave we're going down, we're going to be heading into Cebu and uh, as you know, a lot of the evacuees is are now heading into Cebu. So we're going to be helping out the uh, villages in Cebu uh, City and also in the surrounding areas. Mm -hmm. um, but we have a lot of volunteers heading down, yourself as well. That's going to be our public info officers and attachments. Mm -hmm. And uh, we hope to do what we can within a short period of time. Okay. And um, I guess how many physicians are, are going on this, I guess, the first wave? And how long will they be there? Sure. The, we have about eight physicians and about six uh, nurses, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to be spread out. We'll be there probably, the mission itself will be about three to four days. And uh, some of it will be there for two days and the other will be there for four days. Mm -hmm. And a total time travel, probably around five days. Okay. And you were mentioning this is the, the first wave. That's how right. many How many waves are, are, are being planned? Yeah, Erica. Yeah. We're planning on three waves total, mm -hmm. uh, so we will be spreading it apart so that we can hit multiple missions. Uh, the Guam Medical Association is also raising funds to buy the medications to take with us so that we have as many antibiotics and any other medications that the people may need there for their treatment. Okay. How many people are you expecting to, I guess, to, to help on the, on the first wave? Actually, we're going to be uh, rendezvousing with uh, the St. Luke's Medical mm -hmm. Center. In fact, the St. Luke's Medical Center is very key to this uh, entire mission. They're mm -hmm. the ones that's coordinating a lot of the ground troops together. We'll be running with about 10 of their staff there. So the total delegation, along with the media, it's about 34 people that's with this, with five armed guards. Mm -hmm. And uh, the reason we have the armed guards is because we want to make sure the safety issue is addressed. Right. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Hua Wen, who has headed several missions along with uh, the military, is the head of this mission. And he's planning on about 10,000 people a day is the, the target. Mm -hmm. Uh, for each of the days they're there. 
Right. Well, thank you so much uh, for everything that you do. As I mentioned earlier, KUM will be traveling with the medical team on their mission. You will want to stay tuned for our upcoming special Ground Heroes that will air after our return from the mission, so stay tuned uh, for that. Keep it here. We're back after this.